Hey guys, we're burning the midnight oil here at Propel Bikes in Brooklyn. I'm with the founder, Chris Nolte. How's it going? Doing well. It's been a great time lately. You've been reviewing some of your bikes, checking out some helmets, some locks, just all kinds of stuff accessories wise. Uh, and we found out recently that Bosch, this company that they make washing machines and car parts and electric bike drive systems, recently acquired a company called Kobe right over here. And I'd seen this interface before on the iZip E3 Pro Tour. It kind of comes with the bike in that case. And it was really neat the way that they um, kind of integrated it because it's fancy new technology. It uses your smartphone as the display instead of having a standalone display like you can see over here. This is the Intuvia. Um, and here's, here's a different one. This is on the Stromer, a little bit more bulky off to the side. We've got an easy motion over there. So a lot of these electric bikes come with a display system. And I think in fact, with, with the interface that we're focused on today, you need to kind of build off of the Bosch Intuvia system in yes. particular. And before, I guess before we jump into how that, how that works and everything, this is the Bosch Intuvia system. It's one of my favorites because the display is a little bit larger. You've got this remote button pad over here. The display is removable. It's got a micro USB charging port built in. I mean, it's a, it's a great system to start with, but it's not nearly as big as a smartphone here. And you've got like the iPhone plus size phone. So it's kind of extra big. <laughs> and one of the, the neat things about a phone is that, well, you know, these, these systems are nice, but they don't have GPS built in. They aren't color, most of them. Uh, Bosch does have their own really fancy display called the Nyon, but it seems like that's only available in Europe. That's right. That's right. Yeah, they they didn't get the approval to sell it in the U.S. I guess there's some concerns about uh, insurance and liability and stuff like that because of the connectivity to the phone. Huh. Interesting. And it, approval from who or who would, would like internally? They just decided. I think it was to... an internal thing. They really try to focus on safety, making sure that everything is kind of in line with the law and that they're doing the right thing. And I guess that was kind of the idea that they ultimately decided there was things that were in conflict. And m maybe they knew that this was on the roadmap. I, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I mean th this Kobe system, it's kind of a startup, like some young guys somewhere in Europe. I don't know, was it Germany or something? Yeah, in Germany, right. Yeah. So, yeah, actually, the, the co founder or, or the founder of Kobe, I think he was in, involved with a major digital agency called Razorfish. Huh. And they actually did a lot of work with like Audi, for example, doing their onboard entertainment systems and stuff like for that. For cars? So, for cars. Wow. So, they had a lot of experience in this sort of area, and they thought bringing to bikes would be a great great thing to do okay so we've got this startup company they've got a bunch of smart people and they're working on kind of the apps and, and empowering you with the phone bigger screen gps music some of these other features and then bosch came along and said hey we we like that you know that that means uh we could give people who already have our system a way to upgrade uh, why don't you take me on the tour? And by the way, did I miss anything? Any more clarification on this? Yeah, that's really it. I mean, Kobe has kind of had their system. This system specifically was not completely sanctioned by Bosch, but they've been developing and they were able to work with their interface, even though Bosch didn't officially approve it. But now that they've acquired them, we feel like a little bit different. We're, we're kind of looking forward to the future of this, uh, this partnership. So th that's a really interesting point. So what Chris is saying is, you know, Bosch, this is their mount for the Intuvia. And Kobe just m made their interface. They, they created an option. So they're like, well, yeah, if you already have this, just click ours right on top of it. And Bosch, I mean, you can't really do anything about that. It's a mod, basically. Right. But I guess they liked it enough that they were like, okay, we're just going to buy them. And, um, and make this thing more official. So the really cool thing, again, you have to have the Bosch Intuvia for this particular version to work because it mounts to that interface. Bosch also has another display called the Purion. It's this tiny little thing. A lot of times you'll find it on like mountain bikes. So I'm struggling to find one here. There it is. We get see mountain bike, full suspension. The Purion, it's just this tiny little guy and it has a plus and minus button and everything, just like the, the remote button pad, but it doesn't have that center interface piece. So, you know, Chris, wh what do you do if you, if you have the Purion? How can you still use Kobe? Well, with any Purion, we can actually retrofit it into uh, Intuvia. So, I mean, in this case, maybe you wouldn't even necessarily need the display panel. You can just get the Intuvia mount yeah. And basically, it plugs into the motor with the same type of plug. So maybe, you know, this is late 2017 that we're filming this. 
I got to believe that Bosch has thought about this and maybe they'll sell a cheaper version so you don't have to buy the Intuvia and toss the display aside. My, my feeling is they'll look to make it a lot simpler, but this is kind of an interesting way to look at it in the meanwhile and, and get an idea of maybe what's to come. Yeah, perfect. So we've taken off the Intuvia, we've put on this cool interface, and maybe you can just take us through... Um, you know what this looks like like navigate around a little bit sure so this is the uh, basic information that you see on the default screen um, now with this you have the standard stuff that you would see in the in the Intuvia display the distance um, you have some new information like ETA for example because in here I've actually already programmed an address so it's telling me ETA to my location huh then you have the speed which you know right now we're not moving obviously uh, and then you have the ability to switch to the different levels of assistance. So just oh. look just like the standard in Tubia. You go to Eco, Tour, Sport, and Turbo mode. And look at that. That that must be the power meter. So on, on the Intuvia, it's kind of an up and down thing. Here it looks like more of a horizontal. That's right, yeah. And then you, you also have the battery level, the lights, and you can actually control the lights just by holding for a couple of seconds. Oh, holding the plus button. Wow, look at yeah. that. And as I understand it, this light is an option. That's not something that comes by default, right? That's right. Yeah, there's three different configurations. You can get it with no light, the front light, or the front and rear light. And the rear light is actually wireless, and it hmm. has uh, some turn signals associated with it as well, which is pretty cool. I saw that light uh, when I was reviewing the Pro Tour, and it's it just kind of like clicked on. It, it wasn't as permanent as a lot of these fancier electric bike lights that are wired in. I felt like it's a decent enough solution, but you also had to charge that separately. Whereas this interface, that light right now, it's running off the main battery pack and Bosch now has the power pack 500. So you right. got a, a lot of capacity to draw from for both the light to keep your phone charged on the way to work or whatever. And you know, GPS and keeping that, that display lit, that takes a little bit of battery Absolutely. power. Absolutely, I, I imagine, if I had to speculate, I would imagine that that could be a future uh, iteration when it's when it's actually integrated into the Bosch system more so that they can actually control that rear light as well. That would be cool. Yeah. I, I wonder how it works. I mean, some of these bikes already have their own integrated lights. So I guess you'd have three, you'd have like a headlight, the bike light and the rear light if you opted for the, the highest end Kobe package, which is $339. For $299, you get the interface and a headlight or for I think what was it 249 249 you just get the dock just the the sport version they call it so for example if you're going to do a mountain bike maybe you don't need the light as much well and uh, yeah this is uh, I was saying and I should have shown it or if you look at this yeah. the, the bike has a light going the Kobe light is going and then we have the rear light so I you know in this case if you already have a bike with lights I, I would just you know I, I'm not sure I would get paid I, extra money I agree with that yeah Okay, so let's come back to the display here. Uh, speaking of lights, by the way, I imagine it's, it is dark out right now. It's light in the shop, but that's kind of a lot of light shining in your face. That, to me, that's one of the potential cons of this. It's like, yeah, it's a nice big display, but may, maybe you want it to be dimmer. Well, I think with this, just because it is the, your phone, you can actually just dim the screen just as you would on a standard phone. So you can do night shift. You can bring the, the oh. brightness down. And that's actually going to control the Kobe display as well. Interesting. Get, let's turn it back up bright again for, for a little demo. Um, yeah. You know, and then coming back to using battery, it's, it's neat that there's actually, we'll, we'll take this off in a bit and show, but there were some pins, so it's just charging based on this proprietary phone case uh, that, that you use. And it's, it's a little bit long. Do you have any idea why it sticks out a little bit on the side like that? Well, the idea is actually it's, there's a, a, the phone is plugged into the case. So that's what it allows to draw the power and, and oh. actually pull, push power back into the phone. So they needed that extra plastic at the end. Cause what, yeah, I think we actually might have an extra case right here. So, you know, this is for a smaller phone and you see how it has the little lightning uh, port at the bottom. They needed to have I guess a little bit of a longer case. Yeah. It says Kobe, and there's the two metal pieces that connect. And this is actually an earlier prototype version as well. As you oh. can see, it looks like it's almost like it was uh, 3D printed or something. I don't know. Huh. And then but felt. Is, is that other one felt on the inside too? Like uh, I believe it is. Yeah. Okay. And then there's this optional kind of uh, universal dock. And when you buy this thing, you choose. You say like, I'm going to tell you what phone I have, and you're going to send me a special mount. That's right. Or you get the universal one. And this is this has the little micro USB port on it, just like the Intuvia. So you get a little wire and you can plug your phone in. Um, you know, I, I have my own phone right here. 
kind of the same phone as Chris, I think, six plus, and I would just seat that in there and it's spring loaded and you just pull it back and just like that. So it'd be docked, I'd have a little wire to deal with, but then this slides in and kind of clicks into the, the Kobe interface. Um, and then what is this thing here, Chris? Yeah, so this is the mountain bike styling kit. So you can actually just kind of plug this in right in front here. Huh. And it kind of gives you that like, you know, futuristic dirt bike style. Transformer kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. So, and you could get these in different colors. You can get different colors on the outside here. So they have all sorts of style kits that that you can add to the system to so you match your red bike or whatever, huh? Sure. Okay. Well, that's interesting. It's like 20 bucks, right? Yep. Like doubles as a Frisbee when you're not using it. <laughs> okay. So let's get back to the, the Kobe interface. I love that you can navigate this thing just using, you know, the the button pad over here. Um, but I believe it's also touch screen, right? So you can, yeah, sweet. Uh, this this one's a little bit safer, especially if you're riding, you don't have to take your hands off. I, I And I love that all of the Kobe systems, even, even the base model, have this integrated horn. Will you go ahead and ring it? Oh, oh there we go. Music to my ears. <laughs> like a friendly little chime. <laughs> um, so yeah, what else we got in here? So right now it's on music. So, and then with each of the screens, if you if you tap the I button, it'll so cycle through the different screens, but then you hold down the I button, it will actually open them up. This is the fitness. We don't have much fitness things connected here, but you could, you could connect a heart rate monitor, um, a cadence sensor, some different things. I mean, obviously the bike has a lot built in, but this is also capable of using not this specific one, but other similar ones, not on an e-bike. So mm -hmm. you have all these different capabilities. Of oh, so you're saying in. Kobe has like just a regular bike version. That's and, right. And this this interface down here, it, it has its own little rechargeable battery. And right now, again, it's connected to the Bosch system, so it's all charged off of the main battery. Um, but it does have its own battery. The phone has its own battery, so it's all kind of connected um, back to that universal mount. And I guess that's. We have a universal bike mount too. That's it, yeah. And uh, now if we go into the navigation display, uh, we can look and you can actually edit the route and this will give you kind of an idea. Um, so if I wanted to go here and edit the route and I can resume. So this will give you your navigation. But one of the cool things about this, if I did end route, and I can go plan something. So I say, I want to go somewhere. Hmm. Uh, I'm just going to put this one on just really simple. So you could select, you can also select from your contacts and that sort of stuff. Hmm. But this is really cool. So you have the fastest route, the shortest route, and the quietest. Whoa. So these, these are some options that you don't- Love it. <laughs> there you go, yeah. People can yeah. Get, get out there. It reminds me of um, my, that GPS that I use to get around. There's some different apps out there. There's like Google Maps and Waze and Apple Maps, and some of them have like avoid toll roads. Right. Um, or right. you know, are you on a bike? Are you walking a bus? And and so to have the quietest, that's really relevant to cyclists yeah. and maybe the safest in in a sense. It's really great. I mean, you know, because yeah, you know, some of the maps like Google Maps has the bike specific ones, but to have these additional options that you know. Yeah, it's gonna take me on the bike paths, but then it's gonna actually take these additional considerations. It's it's really quite nice and so I mean feel free to comment on how well that works, guys, because I I mean here's my guess. Maybe they're interfacing with Google Maps API and perhaps they're integrating with the bike. I mean, how would you know it was the quietest route? Like, right? I mean, where is that coming from? It sounds I know, good. I, so my understanding, I think they use the open maps uh, data. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's not the Google Maps specifically. Um, but yeah, actually, quite frankly, I don't have enough experience with it to comment specifically on that. But yeah, I'm definitely interested. We can kind of crowdsource this a little bit and get some different input on this one. It would be so cool to learn it. You know, maybe it's, you said it was Audi that they worked with or something? Right. Sometimes, I mean, there's a lot of possibilities now with all of these internet enabled devices reporting. So like Waze, it tells you well, how to avoid traffic. 
Um, maybe that's what it's doing. It's just helping you avoid traffic. Again, these are all just guesses. We don't really know, but and it I looks imagine, cool. <laughs> I imagine the more people use it, the more you know they can actually gauge some of that stuff as well, right? Yeah. Um, and I think there there's some discussions about those sort of concepts working in the future of cities. Sure. You know, tracking different cyclists and stuff. Bosch like that. is a car company. You know, they've got so if you get a bunch of bikes and cars out there, you can can learn. Right. So. Yeah, if we just select the quietest route, it's going to take us this route. This is actually taking us a route that maybe... So this this would be one way that I would say that might have to improve because it's taking us actually through the Brooklyn Navy Yard, but technically you're really not able it's to like go through the Navy Yard. It's like private property over there. So, yeah, you might have to find a little bit of a different route that way. Okay, well, that's good to, you know, try it in real life. Um, and then, yeah, and then we can continue to cycle through... Here we have the phone, so basically we can hold on there. Then from there, if we wanted to, we Give can- Give me a call. We can, call the oh. shop. We can, so we can call the shop or whatnot. You could have a conversation. So this is like, it would be speaker phone or something? Either that or let's probably, do it. The, probably, the, more, let's probably the more common. Um, yeah, let's, let's try it out. I got my phone. Oh yeah, Chris is calling me. So, hello. hello? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. cool. <laughs> so it does. It puts it on speakerphone. It works. Yeah. I mean, I I would probably. It might be a little bit challenging in a place like the city, but you know, uh, I would probably use like a single headphone. You can't use two. I mean, I don't know about other cities, but in New York City, it's definitely illegal. Although there are some where maybe it like works on your bones. I don't know if you've seen oh, that. Oh, jawbone one. thing. No, not jawbone, but there's this other company that basically like resonates through your bones huh. instead of like going inside your ears. Interesting. So you're able to hear kind of your ambient noise and stuff like that. Yeah, and then there's the um, what's the the, the, the Cena helmet, helmet, the Cena helmet yeah. that has like a little speakers right there. So you know, and what I found is sometimes when you are wearing a headphone, it's kind of wind and right. So. Neat to know that there's options and that you can use your phone on the go. Nice heads up display right there. What are some of those other? We talked about music and. Yeah, I mean, and that's that's the same thing. I think, you know, you can do the music. You can also pair this phone in the same way to a speaker or something like that. And maybe you can use all oh, those all in one, you know. That's right. Have like I've seen people like Mark Sparks. He's got his little speaker get up and right. you could be jamming while you're riding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. See? Um, yeah, and that's, that's most of it there. The one thing that I, I noticed with this interface where you just plug the phone right in, and even if you have the universal mount, the electricity goes straight to your phone. It doesn't seem like there's another port for, for speakers or whatever. This kind of takes that port away. Yeah, that's a good point. That's, a, that's an interesting point you brought up there. Doesn't look like it's uh, accessible anymore with, with this new... Yeah. Uh, That'd be my one feedback for Bosch. So like, you know, if you could refine this, it's great that you can charge your phone, but just having one more micro USB port, very much like the original Intuvia, you get a display. Yeah, it's it's not nearly as feature rich, but then you also have like a way to tap into that. Cause these days, you know, the Bosch PowerPack 500 is pretty, pretty high capacity. And then we've got bikes like the, the recent Miller Delight that has two battery packs on it. You know, we come over here and, oh, it's up on the, there it is, I knew it was floating around. So yeah, two power pack 500s, you got all that battery capacity. Um, some of it's great to, to get you to your destination, but it's also neat to enable all these other devices. You have any other thoughts on this, Chris? I mean, it's it's been kind of a conversation, like any critiques that you noticed? Um, no, I mean, uh, overall, it's it's been a pretty good experience. I'm looking forward to doing some more with it. They did have a change, so they started with the Generation 1, now they're on the Generation 2 system. Huh. So this is actually the Generation 2 system. I think the Generation 1, they did have some quirks with it and that sort of stuff, but the good thing is that they can update the software oh, yeah. because it is connecting to your phone through Bluetooth and you can utilize that. So um, I'm really excited to see what's to come. and. Uh, I think the one other thing that we didn't really go over, maybe just like looking at how it mounts on there and that sort of Will thing. Will you take it off? Yeah, you, you kind of push in this button at the bottom yes. and then slide it off. So that's to release the phone. And you see on the back here, you have those two little ports and that's how it kind of transmits back and forth uh, to give you an idea. I guess we kind of showed this before, but this is, so this is actually, we can pause the tour. Oh yeah, oh. there's the alarm thing, right? Maybe we can, 
Here, right. Sco scoot back a little bit. I want to get this the shadows out of here. Th this is the mount. So, um, you know, the, there's a battery under here where these screws are. There's the charging interface that connected to the phone. The light can be angled up and down, and this whole thing can kind of be swiveled because it's built onto the Intuvia. Does it click off, Chris, or did it? Was it more permanent? Uh, oh, it's right there. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just just like before. There's a little tab right there, and you just press on that tab. And then the whole thing, so that's it. Look at that, wow. And there's the interface. And there's even a little pair button right there. I think that's what that does. Yeah, so that will, you use that for connecting the Bluetooth and such. Wow, so coming back to how you might use this, if, you, if I bought this, I'm, I might take the whole Kobe interface off occasionally if I was parking outside in a place where it could get stolen. Right. Or I do believe you can also utilize that, that same screw on the oh, underside the of the screw. Intuvia mount. Yeah, so that would yeah. be really helpful and probably something I would recommend. There's there's some other uh, screen items that are available here in this mode. Uh, one of them is that when you're away from the bike, you can lock it. So oh, cool. doop, doop. <laughs> that just locked it. So now I'm kind of walking. Uh oh, oh. <laughs> it's a little warning now, but. <laughs> But Did I you, set it off? I think I set it off shaking it. I think it, yeah, I think it might be in total alarm mode. I got it a little bit too here. Let's unlock it again. Now lock it. Okay. Walk away. Walk away, Chris. Just walk away. You're mine. Oh no. And then it starts to, does it alert you or something? It gives an alert first, but I think you were, you were too abrupt with it. And it's just like, <laughs> this guy's really trying to take this thing. We Should we do it one more time? And, and like, right. I want to oh, see what happens on your end. Let's try, nothing really happens on my end, unfortunately. Oh, there's no like text that says, cause this doesn't have a way to transmit wire, wireless data, does it? Maybe this is another future update we might see or something yeah, like that. But then that you have to pay for cool. a SIM card or, I guess if you were close enough, if it was Bluetooth, but the, I don't think, I don't know if this has Bluetooth built into, maybe. This has Bluetooth, yes. Does it? Because then it would have to communicate with that light, the backlight. Yeah, light. and then some of these other Bluetooth kind of GPS tracker systems, then it's it's relying on a network of Bluetooth users. Right, because so, Bluetooth only goes so far. Right. So otherwise you'd, you'd leave and the bike would think it was being stolen. Okay, so it's this is really just like an audible alarm thing going on. Right, and even if you were away from it, not in range, it will still go alarm can we try you, something yeah sure okay lock it up all right chris is locking it okay i'm a smart thief i know about the kobe system i pull it off huck it in the ditch it didn't even yeah <laughs> yay but then the bike the bike is i don't know i don't know i guess that's to me this brings up that point of that that set screw right there so i i guess i would probably lock this onto my bike and it, it is a little bit flashier um i don't know i'm trying to just pick this thing apart a little bit uh it's trying to be a review even though it's more of an overview this time sure absolutely one of the other details i forgot to mention which is pretty cool it has an integration with the weather so hmm. on your trip it's not just the weather where you are now, but it's the weather where you are going to be in hmm. the time. So right now it says here, but say if the trip in, you know, 60 minutes, you're going to be potentially in the rain, it'll give you that ability to check that. It's Interesting. Pretty cool. Wow. So it is, it is pretty smart. Like it's forward thinking. It's not just a nicer display. It's actually much more deep, a lot, lot, lot of depth. Absolutely. And I think just to give the complete overview, there's just one more detail Then just have these different settings. So you have your profile, you set up with your email address, wow. you have these different details that you could connect into, your Apple Health, you could connect Strava in, uh, make sure that you know that you're on an e-bike though, you might get some people a little upset. Yeah. Uh, then you have Komoot. Komoot is just like uh, different trails and stuff like that. It's mostly used in Europe, it's not as popular here. I've kind of been playing around with it a little bit on my side, but um, you know, for mountain bike trails, that that was the thing that I was kind of interested in seeing. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and then you just basically have the the maps you can do, offline data, um, some different things like that, and that's it. Units of measure. Oh, the external sensors. This is kind of cool. So, as I said before, you do the heart rate monitor. Speed and cadence is not as important on the the Bosch system because it's already pulling that data in. Hmm. Oh, so you That's could it. put your own, like, I have a Garmin, and it would potentially connect to those sensors or something. 
That's right. In that in that same sort of in in that same sort of way, because specifically if you're using it on a bike that's not Bosch, because this app can work also on those more universal systems that sure. they have their own battery and it's not an e-bike. And maybe if they're Bluetooth, because I, I wasn't sure if this had Ant Plus um, compatibility or not. So yeah, those I'm are not sure on that one. Some either. more some more details. We tried to be thorough on this, you guys. We're at like almost a half an hour of uh, chatting about it. Hopefully it helped you. I was excited about this and just sharing the news about the Bosch acquisition and stuff. Uh, Chris, I always enjoy working with you, sharing some of your time and, and giving us the latest and greatest here. Um, for the full write-up on this with more details and stuff and comments and updates, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Have fun out there and ride safe.